it's been almost 10 months since President Mubarak stepped down as president of Egypt uh, amid huge protests. Now the elections are beginning tomorrow for the lower house of parliament. Everyone, you know, the tensions are very high and it's a very uncertain time because about one week ago, new protests started in Tahrir Square, this time focusing on the military. And those protests, you know, started off relatively small. And then as, as the, the death toll rose to more than 41 people, now it's become uh, quite a serious situation. It, it sort of has a lot of echoes to what Tahrir Square was like in January and February, but this time, instead of Mubarak as the target, it's the Field Marshal Hussein Kantawi, who's the top military official in charge of the country during the transition. Originally, we had thought this was going to be a moment when it was going to be kind of interesting for different reasons, that, that the Muslim Brotherhood political party, the Freedom and Justice Party, would have their first chance in the history of the organization in Egypt to participate legally in politics. They were expected to be the, the front runner tomorrow, and they still are, but there's a lot of debate about whether or not their support for Tahrir, the, the protests in Tahrir, will affect them or not. Sorry. And then the sort of secular parties, just sort of uh, Egypt is kind of being divided by these two spheres. The other issue is that the elections in Egypt are going to be extremely complex. It's going to take over three and a half months for the elections to be complete for the upper and lower house of parliament. And that's not even getting to the presidential election or the constitutional assembly to rewrite the constitution. Um, every voter will have to choose a political party for one district, and they'll also have to choose two candidates, individual candidates. And one of those candidates, or half of all candidates, have to be either a peasant or a worker. So it's, it's going to be very complex. You know, and many Egyptians are basically illiterate, so it's, it's just, it makes it even more complicated for, for the country to have such a sort of Byzantine electoral law. It's definitely one of Egypt's most tense moments since Mubarak stepped down in February.